looking at the history of Ginkgo Bioworks since its IPO. Look, Jason, you know, unfortunately and tragically for you, for us to have this scientific discussion and to discuss the history of your company, it's not gonna be a bunch of rainbows down the yellow brick road. You know, I don't know how, when you look back on the history of Ginkgo Bioworks, Jason, you're gonna think to yourself like, hmm, you know, I'm really glad that I took the company public with the largest IPO in history, and now we're even struggling to lay off our employees and to perform several drastic changes and cuts to our workforce, which would influence the way that we're going to operate in the future, as well as the types of companies, or you know, the types of companies and customers and projects that you're going to prioritize on the Biofab One facility that you guys have really been investing heavily into, which I think that whenever you guys had to make that investment and that cash burn on the order of, thir of millions of dollars of at least so far for getting that new facility up and running, that it's ultimately worth it because you ultimately do have to continue to scale up your, scale up your equipment and to make things more accessible for your customers and to exhibit how your foundry can hopefully be a strong case for synthetic biology. And uh, I think that if you look back on your IPO, it unfortunately doesn't come off across of that way at all. I mean, Jason, look, even all over your Twitter and all over your X, there are a bunch of people, several replies of people who which have talked about how they have either made a significant capital investment for your company when it went public and having so many broken investors that have lost money from your ventures. It's just disappointing, Jason. And I, I think that you need to reiterate that more to the public, like to the investors and to the other people when, you know, in your next quarterly update, not just give one little tweet about it, Jason. Come on, Jason, you're better than that. You know, you're, you, you went to the best of the best, you know, and now you're trying to show how you're trying to still maintain investor confidence by arguing for the fact that maybe your synthetic biology platform, it still needs further scaling up to maintain, as you have cited in several of your talks, um, Night's Law increase in which there's an increase in, there's a significant increase in the number of shots from experiments that you can get from the, from the increased throughput in your facility. But the thing is that I think that even like one analyst had asked you in a quarterly report and I think that you still never really answered his question is that even if your output is increasing in this exponential manner that you've been saying, I really doubt that the quality of each of your shots is really increasing because that is to say that then your revenue, which is proportional to the output of your new foundry that you've been maintaining with Night's Law, it should also increase exponentially. So I don't know, Jason, you know, I'm a mathematician pretty much, I guess, you know, but to me, an exponential can basically be proportional to an exponential, which is basically whatever you're saying, Jason. So I don't know, Jason, you know, you scratch, you make me like scratch my head every day because I just, I just don't know. Like, I really feel that a lot of shareholders are going to continue to become more disgruntled with you, you know, and they're probably going to file more lawsuits allegedly over your alleged shady behavior, Jason, because, you know, even if you guys haven't had to really significantly issue like any type of stock compensation in you guys attribute that to part of your R&D expenses for this current fiscal year. There were so many years before this year, Jason, in which you guys really had withdrawn a lot of money. And that was only like a few years before you made this significant change to the terms of your agreement. And it's just so much that everybody can go on about, not only me, but obviously other people have mentioned it. And yeah, it's just kind of like, what's, what's the point to withdraw all that money and all those funds jason you know you want to go to the bahamas or you want to like go chill somewhere and have some nice vacation like you know what are you going to do with all that money jason you know we we all need to know because you know your buying behaviors were obviously very intimately connected with the actual history of the company and i don't think that's controversial to say that at all because i mean for an extent you know that's the same with any type of publicly traded company because you know like Tesla, you know, the executives, they can, they can sell stock options and everything too. But yeah, I think that with you though, and the other executives that were at Ginkgo Bioworks, it really has a, a different kind of component to it because given that 
the type of services and the type of way that you're marketing Ginkgo Bioworks primarily as the platform company, I think that, um, yeah, I just think that like it kind of really changed things because, you know, you guys, your technology was very speculative even from the beginning. And even you had expressed skepticism or, you know, not really skepticism, but the possibility for exercising skepticism against the foundry in one of your quarterly updates. And then now it's like, if you guys say, hypothetically, if there's a knock on wood, so to speak, and you guys can't really scale up your founder, like how you're saying to you, like, what's what's the point of having that significant invest, venture capital investment from people and many other hardworking individuals who they funded your initial, your IPO for the company? You know, I just really feel that, you know, Jason definitely needs to address those people more. And I hope he does because, you know, even though I didn't incur any of those types of losses, you know, it's a lot of those types of companies are very skeptical, you know, or I mean, you know, they, well, whatever, you know, like analyzing them and talking about the companies seriously involves a lot of skepticism because they always talk about how there are risks and uncertainties. And there's so many just things that they sweep under the rug and they always refer, you know, us who are people outside of Ginkgo Bioworks to learn about these types of things by like just reading the fine print from a securities, uh, um, you know, a securities filing. And, you know, a lot of that can involve like a lot of technical jar jargon and, you know, it's kind of like a waste of time, you know, because it just like, even with that filing, the upshot is that Jason Kelly and all those other executives were able to still exercise a lot of stock options and get money right before they significantly introduced changes to the business agreement. So, you know, I just really feel like Jason's always going to have to answer to that, whether he tries to sweep it under the rug or not. And I hope that we can get more clarity from him, from him on these types of situations. But it's just like kind of really confusing because why does he for years he's been like dodging this type of question and trying to provide you know information on it so i really feel that the next quarterly update it's going to it's going to you know probably have investors asking more pointed direct directed questions with respect to which parts of the business ginkgo bioworks they should really spend their most uh the most funds on right now